Hello everyone, welcome to Tangle with Tracy Ann. In this week's video, I'll be concentrating on the Tangle Yurt. I'll start off by showing you how to draw the basic pattern of yurt. For my first project I'm going to use this mixed media paper and I've left it the length of the actual pad which is 8 inches and I've just cut a strip 2 inches wide and so we'll be doing a bookmark. I'll be using a white gel pen for this project.
After adding some shading with graphite pencil, I'm going to use a white charcoal pencil just to colour in the tips of these patterns. When you're blending your white charcoal pencil, use a nice clean tortillon and just blend the, the really white part first. I'd go along and do the whole thing. I'll just show you on this one section. Blend the white in first and then go back and blend together the white charcoal pencil and your graphite pencil. But it will dirty the tortillon. Here's another sample that I did. I used grey mixed media paper and you can see I've done those shapes around a circle. I've even put them inside that circle. And then instead of using that rounded shape in between the petals, I've recreated that petal shape and used again white gel pen and white charcoal pencil. So here's a Zendala tile using a white Zendala tile and you can see the pattern there, the length of it is quite thin and that's because of the width of the circle that I drew and I've put them all around the edge and again on the very outer edge. So we'll start with a Zendala tile and using the Marcus Operandus, I'll provide a link below this video so that you can find this on the Zentangle website and first of all I just want to make a cross in the center so I'm just going to draw a line from one side to the other and then I'll do the same in the other direction so hopefully I'm just eyeballing this if you wanted if you couldn't keep a straight line you could use a ruler across there I'll just check it by drawing around a piece of paper, folding it up and putting that there so I know I've got the actual centre. So I'll draw a little dot there because I now want to draw some circles with a compass. So I'll make a smallish sort of border or about a centimetre wide. Oh, I should have moved my Marcus operandus so I'll get rid of that and then make another circle in the center I'll pop that back on my Marcus operandus and I'm going to mark off every spot where there is a diamond. So using a pencil, all these little intervals and I'll just go down onto my line, put a little dot and do that all the way around. I'm now finding the center of the each two marks that I make and drawing another little line on that next circle. So just eyeball in between the two dots and go down to that next line and draw another dot.
I messed my line up a little bit in the center so I'm going to color the whole thing in so first of all I'll do an aura and then fill the rest in with black and um, I can do something with my white gel pen over the top so I'll start with these outer little bits and do a little spiral and then I'll go back and fill that center black section in with white gel pen too I'll do one more example, this time using a square tile, 3.5 by 3.5 inch. Start with the border. And this time I'm not going to use a compass. Instead, I'll find my center point by just drawing lines through those corners. And then about halfway and draw a little arc. Don't worry about the corner of the border, um, doesn't need to be on there, but just as best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nice little arc in each corner. And then I'll do the same thing in the center. A bit harder in the center, but um, I've got the lines to sort of go off. going to divide this circle up by putting lines halfway and then on that inner circle putting one in the center of each of those dots again and that'll just make sure that I can fit my pattern evenly all the way around so using a micron 01 we'll start from the top and go down to those dots either side of the dot in the middle as you're doing this, be careful to just start from the circle, not the border. And trust me, I've done it. Do this all the way around. Oops, now we did it again. I'm going to change the pattern a little bit here, so I'm going from the corners of those petals right to the center of the circle and so it's changed that yurt shape don't be scared to mess around and do your own thing with certain tangles and now I'll aura that entire petal shape
I think I'll add some watercolour pencils to this one. So I've chosen three colours. I'm using Albert Dürer. Um, so I've chosen a red, which is a middle cadmium red, a cadmium orange and light cadmium yellow. So start with a red in the centre. I'm pressing quite hard. The harder you press, the more pigment you get on your paper and um, the richer the colour will be. So I'll go up those lines a little bit. So I'm only doing right in the centre. And then once I get around, I'll do that little section on the petal above it. Now I'm going to add my orange pencil and you notice I'm overlapping the red a little bit. I want them to blend together but I'm not filling the entire space. I want to leave room for the yellow at the top. So with my yellow I'm not going right to the edge. I'm overlapping again the colors that I've already used and I'm leaving the tips just a little bit white because that color will spread and I want it to be a lot lighter on the edge than in the center. So using my watercolor brush, and I've got a fine tipped one, water brush, and start with the lightest color. Notice I'm just sort of playing with that yellow and moving it down to the edge, then going back up the petal. And you can move that, those colors backwards and forwards, just sort of tease them this way and that. If you find that the darker colors are going down into the lighter colors, clean your brush off and then push them back down so that you have a nice light area on the edge. Oops, I should have cleaned my brush there. It's a little bit dirty, so I'll just wipe that off. Clean that up a little bit. Start with a nice fresh yellow. If I was to start from the darker colors and push them down, I'd, I'd completely obliterate the yellow and lose that yellow. So um, I can drag them down a little bit into that yellow, uh, but you, you're in control here. If you find it's coming too far, wipe that brush off and move it back. If you accidentally go over the line, go back with a clean brush with clear water and paint over it and then just blot it with your tissue. And you can usually fix little mistakes like that up. I'm going to use a pine green in that background over the tipple and notice this time I'm only colouring just near the edge of the petal, a little bit as if I was shading with a graphite pencil. And later on when I come back in with my water brush I can just drag that colour to the edge and it'll be darker near the petal and lighter out towards the edge. 
So this is the opposite. We're coming from the darkest and going to the lighter areas. I indulged myself on my 60th birthday and bought these beautiful watercolour fine tech pearlescent paints. They're watercolour paints. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of water. I'm using this nice orangey colour. They're quite expensive. A uh, gel pen probably would do the same trick, but um, I bought them so I'm going to use them. Now this is a paintbrush that I've, I think it's come from one of the Zentangle kits. It's a size 4. And it holds the paint very well, but keeps a nice fine tip. So I'm just going to coat that brush. Might need a little bit more water, perhaps. It takes a few, a few minutes just to um, absorb some of that moisture. And once I've got enough paint on my brush, I'm just going to give it a bit of a twirl. And now I'm going to paint those auras around each petal. These are beautiful paints. They've got fine mica in them that um, just shimmers really beautifully. Take your time if you're using a paint. Uh, gel pen's a lot easier. And if you go over the edges at all, that's okay because I can go back in and use a black fine tip marker and fix that up at the end. The camera doesn't do these paints justice, so hopefully you can see the shimmer there, but it looks much better in real life. I'm going to pop that top layer off now and choose a green colour for my border.
I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, do that so that you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching and until next week, stay safe and bye for now. If you'd like to see more of my videos, head over to my YouTube channel or there are a couple of links here on the screen and there's a subscribe button.